Welcome to On Point, one week out from the Belmont Stakes edition, alongside James Scully. When we see you again, we'll be at Belmont, some business to take care of first. And the question I've been asking everyone, James, what do you think will actually happen if he wins the race? Take me through the next 5, 10, 30 minutes after he wins the race. Well, it's, uh, I, you know, I haven't been there for a Triple Crown winner, no, so I impossible have, to say. I haven't been alive. And I just think, you know, the uh, the Smarty Jones, like, was the best example because he had the lead in, you know, an upper stretch, and that place was ready to explode. You know, crowd never got that opportunity with Big Brown or California Chrome no. or uh, even War Emblem. So, right. you know, it's going to be an electric atmosphere. Yeah, and funny side had the lead, uh, but was tugging. I mean, it was pretty cool clear he wasn't going to get the job done uh, and you have to go back to I guess real quiet 98 mm -hmm. uh, similar to Smarty Jones an even bigger lead uh, wasn't there that day and, and really that was before the next wave of, of crowds uh, War Emblem, Funnyside, Smarty Jones all 100,000 plus Big Brown 90 capped at 90 this year but I mean really a totally different environment from not only the 90s, but even the 70s, when there were triple crowns, they weren't getting these kind of crowds. So, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, to me, uh, you know, I don't get into the whole racing needs a triple crown winner or save racing or any of that hyperbole, but I truly am interested. If it happens, I want to actually see what happens afterward. I mean, just the mm -hmm. energy of the crowd, what the trophy presentations like, you mm -hmm. know, the balloons, bunting unfurled from the roof. Right. Something special is going to happen. Yeah, the build-up last year was great. I mean, being there, I just, you know, we'd be, I uh, was up in the press box, and you hear this roar of the crowd. You go and you look out there, and it was, uh, you know, Chrome's owners, <laughs> like, waving to the crowd. Right. I mean, the crowd was just wanted to celebrate so much. Uh, Chrome, you know, possibly winning the Triple Crown, and it didn't happen. He didn't get the trip. No. and. You know, that's the, with American with with Chrome. You know, he drew that po inside post. It doomed him from the start. Pharaoh, it's you don't have the same concern per se. I mean, even if he draws the rail in the Belmont, everybody is going to expect that for him to put forth his best effort, yeah. regardless of where he is. Absolutely, yeah. Post uh, based on you know, 18 in the Derby, moved inside because of the scratches. One in the Preakness. All right. Didn't matter either way, but some formidable foes lining up. Grade one winners, uh, UAE Derby winner, which is Group Two. Um, next week, we'll certainly get down to brass tacks and actually make a pick. But like we talked about last week, now that we're only one week out, what are you looking for over the next week before you land on a thumbs up or thumbs down on a Triple Crown? Well, I'm, you know, I'm. I guess the post position draw we'll go into that you know a little bit uh you know it's it's everybody's wondering exactly what the Pletcher horses are gonna do you know is is materiality gonna go after them could carpe diem show speed and those two horses are so keyed for the other horses as well because they're really the only two speed horses in the race mm -hmm. and they could you know take turns making runs at them you know conceivably but um you know it's it's one thing about the Belmont is it's not a race that's won too often on wire to wire. I think Tatar is the only one in, <laughs> since the turn of the century. And uh, dead closers outside of Jazzle, you don't see any dead closers winning that race. Right. I mean, even these grinders are all like within five or six lengths of the early lead Absolutely. looking to grind it out. So, um, you know, it, it really comes down to the top contenders for me. If, if American Pharaoh doesn't do it, then it's going to be, I think, Materiality or Frosted or one of those groups. Sure. All right. So if uh, this is unbeatable and this is no chance, where are you right now on American Pharaoh? Oh, I'm definitely right now, uh, you know, he's got a big chance. Wow. Yeah, right. big I'm, chance. I'm leaning on the downswing. I'm, I'm not totally no chance because yeah. I'm not foolish, but... I think Frosted, Materiality, and, and Mubtage are all yeah good enough horses. One of them fires their best shot. There's room there for right. me at the price. but And there's a, there's a good upside, too. There's a chance that Materiality and Frosted are both sitting on a, a, a career best, a real big race. Yeah, and on the, the Brisnet numbers, their numbers are faster, yeah. you know, if you look at depending on what you and want to look at. And that's so. certainly what I'm looking at. I'm looking at those three horses of the best win chance, all the rest. Sure. You know, potentially a horse like Keen Ice could run third and <laughs> oh, help the trifecta, yeah. but... Those are winking. Yeah, I mean the Derby that the trifecta was what it was is, I mean, a huge anomaly at this level to have favorite, second choice, third, 
Uh, I think it was the fourth choice was right. second. The Four of the top five. Was, yeah, I mean, yeah. incredible. Um, and then as we saw in the Preakness, it doesn't work out that way every time, and Belmont probably like that. Uh, but hopefully we'll both travel safe and get to see each other at Belmont and see if we see a Triple Crown winner, but plenty more to discuss next week. Live from Belmont Park, join us.